then that boiler won't fire until an operator actually comes into the room and presses that manual reset button. You know, oftentimes people will refer just to the low water cutoff, but there's actually two that are required on most boilers. We're going to have our primary and our auxiliary low water cutoff uh, that are required by NFPA 85. So on larger boilers, we're going to be subject to NFPA 85. Some water boilers are only going to have one low water cutoff. And we have two low water cutoffs. We have the primary and the auxiliary. Uh, the primary low water cutoff is what we would call a recycling cutoff. So if the water level goes low, it would trip the burner. The burner would shut off, but when the water level refilled, then that boiler is going to relight. So that low water cutoff is a safety device, but it doesn't require a manual reset. The auxiliary low water cutoff is going to require that manual reset. The boiler, if it hits the second or the lower auxiliary low water cutoff, then that boiler won't fire until an operator actually comes into the room and presses that manual reset button. So you can imagine that that is going to be set lower. It's going to be a little more serious of an issue if we're hitting that much lower of a water level that it got through the primary to the secondary. So the code wants us to have that as a manual so that somebody has to go out to the boiler room. They have to investigate what happened that caused this to hit the auxiliary low water cutout. As far as maintenance of these items, I mean, it, it sort of depends where they're installed, right? So sometimes that auxiliary low water cutoff is a conductivity probe that comes in the top center of the boiler. And that can be pretty hard to test without bypassing the primary low water cutoff, which is not something that we want operators doing on a daily basis generally. If you want more information about what kinds of tests you should be doing, you should probably communicate with your uh, your insurance provider. They're going to tell you what they'd like to see uh, to mitigate that risk. But where we have primary or auxiliary low water cutoffs that are in a bridle connection or a connection off the boiler, like in a water column, then typically we want to blow those down on a daily basis or once a shift, kind of depending on your particular plant operating uh, procedures. And so I'm not here to set those procedures, right? You're going to want to consult with somebody about your specific system. But generally, when we blow those down, we're going to just open the drain on that item and give it a good flush to remove any sediment. So the, the chemicals that are typically used to treat a steam boiler or a high-pressure steam boiler well, low pressure as well, are going to cause some of the minerals in that water to settle out. And it'll settle out in like a sludge. And people say that that sludge flows about like maple syrup. And so we're going to open that drain to remove the sludge that is settled in the low point. And that water column or auxiliary low water cutoff bridle connection is a low point. So we need to flush that out. So we're flushing it, number one, to prove that the switch or the relay works. But number two, we're also flushing it because there is sludge in there because our water chemistry is putting the sludge there. So it is a maintenance item as well as a safety check. Uh, and of course that is gonna trip the boiler and cycle the burner off. So there are some facilities that say, no, 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 we can never shut this boiler down. We're only gonna shut it down once a year for inspection. Okay, then what we can do is we can use what's called a, uh, a bypass button or a shunt button. And an operator has to hold this button while they're blowing down that safety device. And they're bypassing the safety device just temporarily while they clean it. And then once they close the drain and that water column refills, then they can let go of that button. And the boiler never trips. Now some people say, well, how do I know that that button's not stuck? And Or how do I know that, that everything's working as it should? And so there are some situations where in that shunt button, a box will add lights or different things such that that button can't be stuck on for more than a minute. So kind of working with each customer and each plant and each inspector for what they would like to see to prove that those devices are working well. We have a lot of options that are still within the code that allows us to um, help people validate that those things are working right.